often get asked, Drew, why can't you stop talking about Aptera? And well, I guess it's because I may have a pessimistic slash optimistic view of the future as to why I think there's going to be a very large generational shift in buying behavior, especially when it comes to our personal vehicles, especially as every generation seems to care a bit more about efficiency and making sure that we take care of this one world, this one planet we got. And it wasn't considered that much in the earlier industrial revolution era. It was just like, yeah, pull all this coal out of the ground, burn all of this oil, because that was for a lot of people the only way certain industries can work. And unfortunately, it still is. Outside of the transportation space, it's going to be much, much harder to transition away from fossil fuels. And for the record, yes, I'm still very supportive and open to public transportation. I wish governments would spend more time developing better infrastructure for buses and trains, and I want that as much as possible, but particularly here in the United States, our government, for both better and worse, was designed to move slowly. And that was originally intended to be a way to protect us as individuals, right? The government can't change the rules or laws on you really quickly, but the downside of that is when there's a really good idea idea like public transportation or nuclear energy because of all the red tape and the slowness of our political system it doesn't matter if we all agree that public transportation is better and should be pursued because it takes so long and it is nearly impossible to get anything done in our current government system so you know vote for it and ask for it as much as you can but you could be asking for it for years and years and years and still really not get anywhere not to mention public transportation tends to work a lot better in countries that don't have to travel as far. A lot of the United States is built around agriculture and farming, which involves lots of big fields, lots of big distances between where people live. Public transport tends to work better when people are all living together. And yes, it can be cheaper, but usually when you have a big city and everybody living on top of each other, that drives the cost of living up. So sure, you could save money by not owning a car, but then a lot of that money will go towards higher rent, higher expenses that you wouldn't find in more rural communities. So I'm all in favor of public transportation, but I'm also a realist and I understand that that's not just some magic wand that you can apply to everyone's life and everyone's use case and say, boom, just use public transportation everywhere and that'll solve all your problems. That's a problem that comes back to complaining about the government, which there's a laundry list of things to complain about and we'll probably never stop complaining about our governments till the end of time. So that means we still have to work with the idea of private transportation, like vehicles that you own yourself and of of course, that's why I'm so excited about this whole electric vehicle transition. The Tesla is no question spearheading into the 21st century, getting everybody on board with the NAC standard and showing how you can profitably and at scale build mass market adopted electric vehicles. And the main reason we're moving towards electric vehicles and not hydrogen fuel cell vehicles and not nuclear vehicles or, or you know, hybrids is because EVs are able to move the most efficiently. Sure, you can pack a lot of energy with Within a gallon of gasoline, but you can only make an internal combustion engine so efficient, and you're relying on literally an explosion to move a piston, to move a valve, to move an axle, and there's so many losses within that process that even with state-of-the-art super efficient combustion engines, you cannot get as efficient as a battery pack and an electric motor, and that's why all electric vehicles have the best efficiency of any vehicles that have ever been made. There's way too many energy losses with hydrogen. I won't go into that because it's such a stupid idea. It's too expensive and the infrastructure is too complicated. Okay, I'm getting into it, but I think as time goes on, it will become more abundantly clear that the companies with the best profit margins and more interesting to you guys, the vehicles that are the most cost effective are the ones that require the least amount of energy to use. Because even as we get better at mass producing EVs left and right and the price of lithium falls and we're building more and more cells every year, the battery pack is still probably going to remain the most expensive part of any electric vehicle, which means that relatively speaking over the grand scheme of EV history, vehicles with smaller battery packs are likely going to be able to price themselves lower than vehicles with larger battery packs. That's just kind of the way the world's going to work. And that brings us to Aptera, which is this super futuristic startup that I'm very excited about because I'm in love with this desire for efficiency. And I think the buying behavior of the public is likely going to follow in the same way that, you know, I was obsessed with iPhones as a kid, even though everyone around me thought, okay, Drew, what's the big deal? It's an iPod that makes phone calls. But over time, more and more people started seeing the potential and all of the opportunities
opportunities that the smartphone would allow. Now to the point that I feel like smartphones are so addictive, they're actually quite destructive to your mental health and they could be quite damaging to a child's upbringing. But that's besides the point. We're talking about the future here and obviously I think most of us here agree electric vehicles are the future. If you don't believe that, just stop watching now. Block my channel. You're not going to like anything I have to say, but I think what's going to dictate a big portion of electric vehicle sales in the future is which one is the most efficient because this whole transition is about efficiency. And I think we're already starting to find some of the limitations within the electric vehicle market. I don't think that there's a limit of people who want an electric vehicle, but I do see a pretty noticeable limit that even Tesla is experiencing, which is why they're doing price cuts and inventory discounts and end of quarter sales pushes because there's a limit to the number of people that can afford electric vehicles. And even Tesla, with all of their manufacturing expertise and all of their vertical integration, is kind of bumping up against their margins a little bit, going, okay, we need to clear inventory now because not enough people are buying these. And that eats into their average selling price and eats into the profit margin of every vehicle sold. And I'm sure Tesla is going to exist. I'm not saying that one company has to die for another to succeed. I think lots of automotive companies will continue to thrive. But the genius of Aptera that I'm seeing is a way to lower the cost of ownership by a substantial amount. And that's thanks to smaller battery packs and more efficient designs that can unlock use cases that were never possible before. And this is not just talking about Aptera is able to make a low price EV. It's a lot bigger than that. It's that when you get watt hours per mile close to the 100 range, which is what Aptera is targeting thanks to their aerodynamic shape, that opens up a lot of possibilities for the charging infrastructure, which is arguably just as important as the vehicle itself, if not more important. It's been a huge deal breaker for a ton of EVs on the market, right? Like Lucid Air, fantastic vehicle. A bunch of people sold it because of their experience with Electrify America. And as you start reaching more affordable and affordable markets, there's going to be a growing number of people that can't justify an electric vehicle because they can't necessarily charge it from home. You know, they don't have a great setup at their apartment or their townhome that allows them to plug in their car. And a lot of the time, plugging into a basic 110 outlet is not going to cover daily driving needs. You're going to need to install a faster, higher amperage plug in order to get meaningful range into your car. And a lot of people, you see it all the time in America, they're parking on the street. Their garages are full or a lot of houses now convert their garages into more living space. So you got to park outside and to a person on a budget, the concept of buying this really expensive EV, hopefully you make it back with the gas savings, but now you got to spend extra money on the at home charging equipment too. Yeah, that adds to the overall cost of ownership experience. Whereas what the Aptera is targeting is the concept of letting the EV charge itself purely from sunlight. And sure, even if you live in a cloudy climate where maybe you only get 15 to 20 miles of range for free via solar, still, that's a lot of free driving miles. That's impressive. But let's say you live in the middle of Alaska and you have three months out of the year where it's completely dark. Well, because of the Aptera's aerodynamic shape and efficient powertrain, you can plug it in via a basic 110 outlet and get over 200 miles of range added back overnight. You don't need some fancy high amperage plug. This is literally going to take the same outlet you charge your phone off of. And that ease of charging and that ease of affordability, knowing that this EV for a lot of its driving won't need to charge you any money, whether it's from electricity bills or it's from gasoline. And because of our ever growing grid infrastructure and a lot of people who are living in apartment complexes that don't have access to their roofs, not everybody can buy solar. Not everybody can buy their own power wall. A lot of people just have to pay whatever the electric utility rate is in their area, which the trend is it's going up. Grid infrastructure is not necessarily getting cheaper just because there's more solar panels connected to it. There's still a lot of wire connecting all of these grids and houses together that needs to be maintained by utility providers. And that's why we're expecting the price of electricity to likely increase, especially if you're not able to own your own home and buy solar and a power wall for it and all that. So for people who are doing a lot of on-street parking and that rising cost of electricity is eating into the overall gas savings they can get out of an EV, that makes it a hard thing to justify. And I know that a lot of people probably look at the Aptera and say, you know what, it's a three-wheeler, that's weird, it's a two-door vehicle, and those just don't sell all that well. But I don't think we can really compare it to anything else on the market because there's never really been a vehicle with a three-wheel design that's enclosed. It still has an HVAC system. You can still drive it around in the winter and it's actually capable of charging itself, being fast and also going as far as it does with the launch edition targeting a 400 mile range, which is far longer than the majority of EVs coming out to 
day, it's hard to compare it to really anything because there's never been a vehicle like this on the market, which is why I don't think you can truly gauge what the true demand is for it. But I predict the demand will be far larger than most people realize because the data is showcasing that the average vehicle on the road has one and a half people in them. So for the vast majority of driving, two seats is enough. And sure, I hope more people can get into biking and e-biking their way to work. That's far more efficient and that uses less energy, but there's a lot of climates and a lot of situations where biking to your destination may not be that practical. If you're going to, you know, a dinner party, you don't want to show up all sweaty, have to change out of your clothes, especially if you're going to get some groceries, run some errands, or you're bringing food to the get together. A bike can only cover so many use cases. It's great and I love mountain biking, but there's definitely a big difference in use case between a vehicle with an HVAC system that you can get inside in, drive around in the rain and snow, and go on great distances, whereas biking is just good for kind of around town driving. And like I said, in a lot of these more rural communities across the country, that's going to be a lot bigger of an ask than it would be to just ride around in a car. And I also think we're seeing an arc, a trend continue with the cost of living. There's less people that are able to afford their own houses because the price of real estate just steadily increases. And that pushes more people to renting their homes instead of buying them outright. So the cost of living is higher. They have to work harder. They have to pursue higher paying jobs and be a bit more strict with their spending. And that also encourages a lot of people to have greater commutes because typically the more dense you are in a packed area, the higher the demand is, therefore the higher the price is. So a lot of people, in fact, I know a ton of people in my social circle that have to move further away from their place of work and have to commute longer because they can get a cheaper place to live further away where the demand isn't as high. So because I expect that trend to continue where it's cheaper to live outside of the major cities, basically the more populated it is, the more expensive it is, and that increases the likelihood of people needing to commute to work and then drive home a little bit further away where they can get a better price on rent or maybe afford a home in a different area because it's a lower price and they can qualify for a mortgage on a home further away than they can in town. And couple that with the cultural phenomenon that is the birth rate decline. You know, I know a lot of people are saying the Aptera is not going to work for them because their whole family can't fit inside of it. And that's definitely true. It's not going to be the last vehicle for a ton of people, but there's a lot of people these days that are feeling more interested in traveling before having kids or they don't feel financially prepared to expand their family so they'd rather just be on their own or just with their partner in which case the Aptera is going to be perfect for a lot of those households and be a lot cheaper than it would be to buy a big SUV or a big pickup truck which is kind of the social norm these days that's what everybody's used to but I think there will be a generational shift as the cost of living grows higher and higher and it's going to be more and more expensive to pay for gasoline pay for these larger vehicles and the push towards a more energy efficient future I think will continue and that light at the end of the tunnel of how do we get more efficient how do we get better energy consumption is the Aptera because that's the only company right now that has a targeted 10 miles per kilowatt hour no one is even close to that and I think over time as production starts and crash testing is done more people will be open to the idea that okay this actually can be a very safe vehicle to travel in and okay the solar energy charging is true it's real it's not a fad it's not vaporware anymore we'll have our initial bubble of tech enthusiasts that want to take delivery of it right away but I think as the world and as the market starts to learn and understand that there's a vehicle like this in production and that the range numbers are true you're gonna see demand for a two-door three-wheeler like never before because there's never been a two-door vehicle with cost savings this high and with range this good for the money and there's never been like a self-powered vehicle before right so once everything starts clicking in people's heads into all of the possibilities of a vehicle that can use this much energy that can be this cheap to own and also have CarPlay which is a huge requested feature in the Tesla and Rivian market they don't want to support it Aptera does support it so it's going to be compatible with these freaking smartphones that we're also addicted to and on top of that Aptera is going to be a big fan of right to repair which I could see annoying a lot of people out of Teslas and Rivians they're great cars and I'm an owner I love it but anytime something goes wrong it's not going to be cheap to replace in service whereas Aptera is trying to make all of those parts and manuals accessible to the masses so that anybody can work on their Aptera and every part is accessible and affordable so I see all of these advantages making a real impact and kind of fitting the next generation that might be less inclined to grow their family or not be able to afford a super big house or maybe not be able to own their own land because they're living in apartments and that often means street parking parking outside not having 
having a garage. And it's just a simple fact that with a lot of markets, supercharging is getting so expensive that the savings for gas are negligible because if you can't charge from home and you have to pay 50 or 60 cents per kilowatt hour every time you charge your EV, then yeah, you're not gonna be saving much money on it. You'll probably pay a premium for the registration than you would compared to a gas car and the electricity is gonna be barely less than a gas vehicle. So for a lot of our world, which is having less ownership of housing, less garages, more on-street parking, the traditional four-wheeled EV that only goes three to four miles per kilowatt hour and costs a lot more because of that huge battery pack, it's just not gonna be cost-effective for a lot of people out there. And that's why I think Aptera is kind of like headed where the market trend is, which is a push towards sustainability, a push towards efficiency. And in that, a lot of people, I think, will learn to love it. It's just a vehicle that looks as weird as it does, that turns heads, that's also affordable, that can still be fast, that can have long range and not be expensive, that can still be high tech and serviceable. I truly believe the market for this is quite large. I'm not saying it's going to replace all SUVs on the market, but I do think that it will easily become the most popular auto cycle, you know, the most popular three-wheeler ever made, and Aptera could end up becoming one of the largest players in the automotive market. I genuinely believe that. I'm not saying that just because I've met with them and talked with them. I just think this is where the market is headed, personally, and there's a lot of people driving around by themselves or with one other person, and as less and less people are having kids, there's a greater desire to travel more and have more independence and freedom, and that's kind of, for better or for worse, what this country was founded on. Individuality. You get to do what you want to do, and there's pros and cons to that ideology, but I think the Abtera supports that ideology very, very closely. You can go wherever you want to go, as long as you want to go. You've got space in the back. You can set the air temperature. You can set what music you're playing, and it charges itself. You don't have to buy this certain home charger, and if you want to go a thousand miles non-stop, you have the choice to do that. Pretty much the only compromise is, yeah, there's only two seats, but who knows, maybe Aptera has something in store with uh, a little more occupancy. But do you guys disagree with me? I know I just threw a lot at you, but feel free to let me know your thoughts down in the comments below. And thank you to everybody supporting this channel directly. Seriously, helps us out a ton, as does just watching these videos. So thanks again. Have an excellent rest of your day.